on this show, I'm going to give you my mid-year awards. So stick around, groove out to the groovy intros, and then we're going we're gonna to do what we do. So for Boxer of the Year, I, I kind of will throw out a couple of names, but I think for me right now, it's Terrence Crawford. Best performance of the year. He knocked the Hall of Fame out of Errol Spence, as one of my commenters said. Terrence Crawford, best boxer of the year. Most memorable performance. This is the year Terrence Crawford became a Hall of Famer. This is the year Terrence Crawford silenced the critics. Terrence Crawford, to me, is the boxer of the year at the midpoint of 2023. The only people that kind of make a case otherwise are Teofimo Lopez. Teofimo had a tremendous performance against uh, Josh Taylor. That makes him a two-time lineal world champion. It's so stupid people don't acknowledge Teofimo Lopez as an undisputed champion because he truly was an undisputed champion. That's just history, just being stupid. At the time, Teo was regarded as an undisputed. That's uh, the victors of war will rewrite history how they see fit. But Tio was undisputed at lightweight, despite what people say. Now he's the lineal champion at 140. That in performance was extremely profesh, uh, impressive. If Gervonta Tank Davis fights someone that's extremely interesting, he has two really, really good wins. If he can get a third win and it's a really good opponent, it's basically between Tank and Crawford. I don't know if Tio can fight another interesting opponent at for the Heisman. But really, to me, it's Gervonta Davis... And Teofimo Lopez battling for the second spot. And Terrence Crawford with that emphatic performance being the best of the year. As for my mid-year fight of the year, I think that it's pretty clear. It's uh, Luis Neri versus Avat Hovanesian. Just a back and forth. In the big scheme of things, kind of a meaningless fight. It didn't really move that division in any further along. It just was kind of a beat each other up fight. But sometimes those fights are the fights that win fight of the year. As I've always said, you didn't see Floyd Mayweather in a lot of fight of the years. And the reason of that is fight of the year is often created from two fighters that are deeply flawed, doing problematic things to make the fight far more competitive than a, a vastly more intelligent fighter would do. So, Luis Neri, Azat Hovanesian, they were two immovable objects, and they just ran into each other and punched each other an awful lot. And that set the stage for an action-packed fight. I think another one that's an interesting one is Kenny Sims Jr. versus Bakhtar Akamadoff. That was a wi two wills. Um, Kenny Sims had to dig deep, fight, find some adversity. Akamadoff probably feels that he's won every fight that he's lost. Uh, very, very interesting and competitive fight. Those are probably like the two fights off the top of my head that I would say I've enjoyed the most. I think an underdog fight that no one really mentions is the first Antonio Morales versus Dejuan Calloway fight. I think that's a sneaky, really, really good fight. And it was a TV opener on ESPN, but it ran parallel to the David Benavidez versus Caleb Plant pay-per-view card. I was there live, but I feel like 95% of the boxing world was not watching that fight. Otherwise, they would have seen a very good fight. Speaking of which, Cody Crowley versus Abel Ramos is another fight that I think is right up there in the fight of the year conversation. I didn't catch that one live, so I always forget that that one existed. For prospect of the year, don't kill me, Diego Pacheco, but I think you're sitting in the front seat. I know you want to do the classic prospect thing where you're like, I'm not a prospect, I'm a contender. Diego, you're feeling like the best prospect in the boxing world right now. You deserve to be called that. If you don't want to be it, we can give it to someone else. The other two right behind him right now, I feel, I think Floyd Schofield of Golden Boy Promotions is looking like the number two guy at prospect of the year currently. Big puncher, explosive. Seems like everything you want in a fighter. He's right there. And then I think three... Little untested so far, but Abdullah Mason is looking the goods. We could prematurely give it to Abdullah Mason, but I'd like to see him face some adversity. Last year's winner of BC Ramirez. We tend to give prospect of the year either uh, based on achievement. Diego Pacheco getting the best wins right now, most meaningful wins of prospects, so he's probably the guy. Round of the year, round 10, uh, David Stevens versus Sean Hemphill. Fantastic fight where Stevens was more than likely down on the cards. I don't think he was officially down, but he thought he was down. Gets a 10th round knockout. I don't see a way where that round isn't round of the year. People have stopped giving out round of the year because they don't watch boxing. 
They don't know enough fights, right? If it's not one of these big fights, big main event fights, they don't they don't know what it is. But that's the round of the year. David Stevens, feel free to stand up. Sean Hampel, you was part of that as well, and you fought a courageous and great fight, so we we respect you as well. Our favorite award that we just created, Contender of the Year. Who might the Contender of the Year be? I'm just thinking out loud. Who could be the Contender of the Year? Well, I mean, we could call Shakur Stevenson the Contender of the Year at the midway point, but he's probably going to end the year with a world title. I think that the Contender of the Year probably would be Boots Ennis, but we're bordering on three years in a row of him being the Contender of the Year. Last year, we gave it to Joe Joyce. I'm just trying to sit and think, who's the person that I most want to see in a world title fight that doesn't have a world title yet. Maybe William Zapata. So William Zapata, I think, is our contender of the year because he's deserving of a world title fight. Sure, he probably avoids Shakur Stevenson, but that just shows he's intelligent because Shakur probably beats every single fighter in the division. I think that the only fighter that possibly gives him an honest fight is Gervonta Davis, and even then... He's a very, very smart fighter. Contender of the year right now, the front runner, is um, William Zapata on my list. I'm trying to think who else. Manager of the year right now, probably Bill Haney. You know, Bill Haney's masterfully negotiated and led his career of his son. So Bill Haney, front runner for that. I'm trying to think if there's any other uh, really, really interesting awards to give out. Knockout of the year, I think I'm leaning towards Junto Nakatani knocking out our friend Maloney. It hurts my heart to say it, but that violent 12th round knockout felt very iconic. And Junto Nakatani, I think, is a top 25 pound for pound fighter, personally. So I think that's that. Let me know if I left out any categories in these mid year awards. Let me know if you agree with my logic or not. This is just kind of me freestyling because this fight week was terrible. There was nothing to talk about, and my friends didn't want to jump on the internets and talk boxing with me. So I'm just freestyling. I, If you're watching the video, I'm very sweaty right now because I have a very hot light illuminating my face. So I'm going to turn the camera off. Join the conversation and let me know how this goes.